Hello everyone, and thanks for checking out Automation Toolkit. I am Alon, and I created Automation Toolkit. Automation Toolkit is a tool for creating your own After Effects scripts with your special button that I call Automations. Automation Toolkit comes with 11 automation files that you can easily install yourself. First, I want to talk generally about the whole script and its features, and then go in depth on how to create automations. This is the main toolbar. You can open every automation in the editor by pressing right click on the automation button and assign a name, description, and a custom icon. The next step is to create the functionality of the automation with automation lines. For this, you have the plus button to create them. Automation line is a basic command that can be one of seven types. The loop, set, action, if, message, list box, and variable. Every one of them have a different purposes and properties. Some of them can contain another automation lines inside them, and other can contain many inputs. And the combination of them together make the functionality you want. After you finish editing, you can save it by clicking the back arrow and use the automation by clicking left click on the automation. You can import and export the automation for sharing them with others and backing them up as separate files. Keep in mind you can also run the automation from the editor by clicking the run button. In addition, you can add lines in custom location by clicking this button and then where you want to add a line. On every line, you have an information button that will give you an information about this type of automation line. You can also get more information inside the help panel, in the setting window, or the help document. Finally, you can create categories and sort your automation between them. So that's it for the first part of this overview. And by now you should know how to navigate inside Automation Toolkit as well as have a basic understanding of the buttons and some of the features. In part 2 I will explain each automation line and in part 3 we will create our first automation. So let's talk about the types of automation lines. We will add an automation line by clicking the plus button. The default is the loop. The loop purpose is to be the mechanism that will make the same functions on many objects. If we will compare automation with a factory that automate tasks, like a car factory, the loop will be the assembly line that essentially takes all the cars one by one and make the same functions on them. The loop will take all the layers of the comp one by one and makes actions on them too. You can add automation lines inside the loop with its plus button, and they will be the function that will run on each layer. The next automation line is the set. The set purpose is to set the value of a property. Layer, project item, and keyframe have different properties. First, you will have to specify which object you want to set. If the set is inside the loop, you can select the loop name. So you will set every object of the loop one by one. The name of the loop will reference every time different layer, item, or keyframe. After you specify what you want to set, you can see the type of object next to it. It can be a layer, item, or property. Next, you can specify what property you want to set. Every property has different value type. It can be number, text, boolean, that is essentially true or false. It can be layer and item. After you specify the property, you can type the new value for that property. You can also calculate math operations on number of values. The value can be custom value that you type or a property value. The next automation line is the action. The action automation line function mostly like the set, but instead of setting out the property of a layer, it will make an action on the layer. For example, an action can be to delete, duplicate, precompose, or replace. Every object has different actions. Like the set, you will have to specify the object you want to make action on. Next to it, you can see the type of the object, 
Then specify the action you want to make on it. For some of the actions, you have to specify another object. For example, if you want to replace a layer in the comp, you will have to specify the item object you want to replace with. So if you manage to follow, you probably noticed that all the automation lines we covered works on all the loop objects. But many times we want to run functions on specific layers, item, or keyframes. So for this, we have the if automation line. The if purpose is to filter the objects before any function on them have been done. For example, if we want to change the label of only the null objects in the composition, you have to use the if automation. The if works like the other automation lines. First, you will have to specify the object you want to check. So we will choose loop 1, and we can see it's a layer. So if we will search in the property dropdown, we will find the property is null. This property is true if the layer is null object, and false if not. Next we can choose what the operation we want to check equal or not equal. Then the value we want to check. So we will select true because we want to check if the layer is null property is equal to true. To finish this example, we will add automation line inside the if that will happen only if the condition of the if automation line is true. So click the plus button and now we can see this new line inside the if automation line. We need to change the type of this line from loop to set because we want to set the label. We will select the loop name that will reference every layer in the comp. Then we want to select the label property and to set it to the value of the color we want. For this I will select blue. Now we can test the automation by setting up a test composition and clicking the green run button. And as you see, the automation worked as expected. It worked because the loop took all the layers one by one and the if automation asked if the layers is null property value equal to true. And only the null object layers came as true. And if true, the set automation line sets the label to blue. On the last three automation line types, I will go quickly because some of them are less important or complicated and need separate tutorial for explaining them. The message in the list box purpose is to show messages to the user. So you can type your custom text and connect it with a property value to create custom messages. The list box is for collecting many messages into a list message. So if you select in the message sum to list and then add a list box, then you can select the message name to show a list with all the messages. The last one is the variable. The variable purpose is for saving custom data that can be any type of object. So you can use it outside the loop or receive input from the user. The variable is needed for more complicated automations. So before you try using it, make sure you well understand all the other automation line types. So that's it for the second part of this overview. And by now you should have a basic understanding of the automation line types. If you want to learn more about the properties, you can read about them in the help document or in the help panel in the setting window. In part 3, we will create our first automation and I will show how to customize the look of automation toolkit and how to use categories. In this part we will create automation from scratch. In the first example, we will make a very simple automation that adds the name of the composition to the layer name as prefix. First, I will open the existing automation in the editor with right click. If you want, you can delete the existing automation and create a new one. Let's add a loop and we have a couple of options we can change. The important option we have is what object we will loop on. The default is the layer in the active comp. Items in the project will loop on all the project items. Layers in other comp is there if you need to loop on other composition that is not open or selected. Keyframes in property. This option will let you loop on the keyframes in a specific property like position. A custom amount of time will give you the option to choose how many times the loop will cycle. So now that we know the options within the loop, 
we will select the default layer in the active comp because we want to make this automation on the active composition. The next step is to change the name of the layers. For this we have the set that as its name predicts, set the property of the layer. So click on the plus button of the loop to add a new line inside and change the line type to set. The first option of the set is what object would you want to set. In this case the loop will be selected automatically because this is the only possibility. The next option will be what property you want to set. You can take a look of all the properties that you can set, but in this case it will be the name. Now we have to specify what the new name will be. The default option is custom value, a custom text that we type. Just to see what it does, let's type 1, 2, 3 and run the automation by clicking the green run button. We set all the layer names to 1, 2, 3. If you can see a change in the names, just click on the source name and it will switch to the layer name. We want to add the comp name to the layer's name. For this we have the plus button inside the set. The plus button will enable you to add values together. So click this plus button and let's change the type of the value from custom to the loop name. Now we have the option to select one of the properties of the layer. So for this we will select the name property to add back its name. And now we can test the automation. But before you hit the run button, click Ctrl Z to undo your last run. So we can see that we added the text 1, 2, 3 before every name. Let's undo again and change the 1, 2, 3 to the name of the composition with space at the end. So let's test this. And now we successfully managed to change all the layer names as we wanted. But we can make it better by adding the name of the composition automatically instead of typing it. These steps will be a bit harder to understand, so if you find it too complicated for you, just stick to this version. So to get the name of the composition, we have to save the composition in a new variable. So for this, we have to make the variable before these automation lines. So click on this button to add a line at custom location and add a line at the start. The type of the line is good because we will add the variable inside the new loop. So add a line to the first loop by clicking its plus button and then change the type to variable. Let's change the variable name by clicking the pencil, change it to composition. So now we have to select the type of the variable we want to set. The type of composition is an item, because it sits inside the project panel. To get the composition, we have a special property for every layer that contains the composition that the layer sits inside. So next we will choose the loop name that will reference the layers, and then we will have to select the property containing comp that will give us the composition. Now we can go back to the set and if we click on the drop down we can see composition. So click the composition and now we can select the property and name. So if we test this we can see it works but we have to add the custom value between them to add the space. So I will change this to custom and type space and then click the plus button and select loop 1 and then name. I will test it now and for me it works. If it works for you, change the name of the automation and save it by clicking the back arrow. If not, I recommend to try this again as it's very short automation. This example is only the basics, so feel free to try more properties and develop this automation more. In the next example, I will show you a way to create an automation that will execute menu command. So create a new automation and add a line. Set the line to action and select menu command. The menu command will try to execute menu commands but you have to type the command exactly as it type in the menu. And if it's inside the submenu, type the option of the last menu. So let's make this automation as a shortcut to import file. Let's go to file, import, and file. You have to type the file with the three dots. And test the automation. 
Now if we go back and press left click on the button, it will open the import menu. So you can make a shortcuts toolbar, you can also open windows or other scripts. The last automation we will create for this overview will add a motion blur only to the layers that have keyframes in the position property. So add a new automation and let's name it to position motion blur. I recommend to fill the description. Now add a new line. The default loop is good. Add another line inside and change the line to variable. This variable will contain the position property, so we can check if it has keyframes. Change the variable type to property and select the loop 1. Now we can select the position x. Also click this button to change the variable name to position x. Add a line inside the loop and change it to if. Select position X and now we have properties for this. Select have keyframes and then true. So we check if the position X property have keyframes. Add a line inside the if that will happen only if the property has keyframes. The last thing we have to do is to turn on the motion blur. So change the type to set and then select loop 1. Motion Blur and True. Now we can set up a test composition and check the automation. For me the automation works well. If you want to make it better, you can add more properties for this automation, like the scale or position Y. Just add another variable and set it to the property, and then add another if to check this new property and then the same set inside. This will be it for this overview. There are endless amount of possibilities and ideas for automations, so try to think of the ideas that will benefit your workflow. Before we finish, I want to show you how you can customize the look of Automation Toolkit. So open Automation Toolkit Preferences window. In this setting, you can change this number to stack your automations in the number of lines. In this tab you can choose how the automation order will be, alphabetical order, your custom categories order, or date created. You can change the orientation of the panel and set the size of all the buttons as you want. Here you have a list of all the automations, and you can create new categories and add automation from this list, and change the order as you like. So that's it for the overview and have fun with Automation Toolkit.